Hey guys and girls, Bassmaster Opens Pro, Hugh Cosquilla. This is your September 1st fishing report. I wanted to get it out in time for Labor Day this weekend. I know there's a big high school tournament coming up. So it's gonna be the bass fishing report for Lake Conroe. Starting right off the bat for water conditions for the lake. Uh, we're out here today. Water temperature will be 85 to 91 degrees, depending on where you are. We're further north right here, up in Caney. Water's gonna be a little bit cooler up here, but down on the south end, uh, it was 87 to 90. That's really gonna be dependent on how much wind there is. Less wind, that water temperature is gonna feel a little bit higher. When we got a little bit of wind, it's gonna mix up a little bit more. Talking about mixing, one of the biggest things that's going on right now at the end of summer, fall transition, is gonna be the thermocline. Making sure that we're staying above it. If you're unfamiliar with the thermocline, basically what it is, is it's gonna be a line in the water, it's gonna be a barrier, and below it, there's gonna be very little oxygen for those fish. We're gonna see it on our fish finder. I'm gonna put that up on the screen in a second. Basically what it is, is gonna be a separation in the water. Below it, there's not gonna be much oxygen, so there's not gonna be any fish below it. That's gonna affect where I'm fishing, how I'm fishing. A lot of the time this year, you'll start to see dead fish floating on top of the water. That's things like carp, catfish that are bottom feeders. They can't get down there where that food's at for them, so they end up dying, and that's why we see them floating. Bass can be the same way. They're gonna to have to stay above it. Luckily, they can suspend or just move shallower. Down on the main part of the lake, I was seeing it between 20 and 25 feet. It's a little bit deeper. I've seen it start mixing in some places. Uh, we'll start to see some nasty bubbles on top of the water. That's how I know it's gonna start mixing. And hopefully once we get rid of it, fishing will start picking up again. Um, we're still catching some fish. Uh, it's definitely not as great as the springtime and the wintertime for me. Still catching some, not as many big, big fish numbers, but definitely some quantity uh, out on the lake. A lot of time out on Lake Connor, we're actually fishing cover, structure, things that are related to the bottom, like brush piles and rock, tire piles, ledges. And once that thermocline kind of gets out here and forms, they're not able to kind of sit on it. These fish really become pelagic, which means they'll suspend and kind of just swim and follow that bait. So we can still fish deep. We're just gonna have to fish shallower than that thermocline, make sure we're fishing above it. Um, anywhere from kind of eight to 15 feet is really where I feel comfortable right now. Um, the biggest thing that's gonna be important for me is knowing that there's bait on the spots. We're gonna be looking at our 2D, our down imaging when we're graphing these spots, making sure that we're seeing clumps of bait in or around the brush piles, the rock piles, tire piles, ledges, whatever we wanna fish. Um, that's gonna be really important for me. Talking about bait, how does the bait move? Where should I go look? So earlier in the summer, fish are gonna be on top of the points because that's where the bait's gonna be. As it starts getting hotter and hotter through August, now into September, these fish are gonna push further off of the points and then they're gonna start pushing off to the sides. That's gonna be kind of ledges, start leading to creek channels. So that's where a lot of my offshore spots are gonna be right now related to ledges, brush piles on ledges, ledges themselves, uh, or just places where that creek channel kind of swings by, that's where that bait is gonna be as they start to transition and move to the back of the creeks. Um, one thing that I, I really think is important this time of year, for me at least, is fishing what I call open spots. Earlier in the summer, May, June, July, we're starting to fish pretty much isolated brush piles a lot of the time. Those get fished very frequently, maybe 15 times in a day in the, in the middle of the summer. Um, so basically what I wanna do is those fish get smart and they start to move off those brush piles, off to the side of them. They will go to those brush piles to feed, but when they're just sitting, they're gonna sit off to the side of them. So I'm gonna start fishing what I call open spots. And really what I mean by that is something that's kind of a, a bunch of stuff scattered in an area, kind of on a flat and it could be multiple brush piles kind of in an area, could have some rock in it, could be just kind of a point, I could just fan cast a point. Um, just because these fish get super smart, super pressured, they're gonna start to move off this stuff and that's gonna really impact my bait selection, what I'm throwing offshore right now in these kind of open spots. That's not to say we still can't go fish brush piles, isolated brush piles. Like I said, fish are still gonna move to them to feed but they might just be sitting off them. So if we time it right, we'll be able to catch those fish. Talking about bait selection, I wanna be able to cover water with my baits. I don't always know if they're gonna be in the brush pile or if they're gonna be around the brush pile or the rock, all the trash that people throw down there. 
So I have to cover more water than just where I'm thinking the fish are going to feed. So one of the first things I'm gonna throw, pretty much really the only thing I'm gonna throw is gonna be a crankbait. This is gonna be a 5XD. It's gonna be a little bit shallower than a lot of people wanna to, want to throw them. Uh, 5XD I think goes between 12 and 15 feet. Doesn't matter the brand of crankbait, but really the color is what's gonna be mattering to me. I'm gonna be kind of throwing a shad style bait, uh, shad colored bait, just to kind of focus on that thread fin that's gonna be around those brush piles around those ledges that we're trying to graph and see on our screen. This is a castaway seven foot 10 heavy rod. I've got on 12 pound line and I've got on a slow reel. This is a 6.2 Corrado K, it's a 200 size. What's very, very important for me when I'm fishing these crankbaits is making as long as a cast as I can. I take a lot of people out on my boat and they can't cast. They can't cast very far. Their brakes are too tight on here. They're not throwing a long enough rod. I wanna make sure that I get this thing as far away from the boat as I can. It takes a long time for it to get down there and then it's gonna start coming back up. So boat positioning is gonna be really important. Making sure I'm throwing the right equipment, a long rod and the lighter line will get that bait down there quicker and I'll be able to catch more fish. Once I'm fishing this, I'm gonna burn it. These fish are really pressured, really smart. I just kinda of wanna take them by surprise, pretty much burn it through their house and make them react. The other bait I'm gonna throw is one that's gonna be kind of a little bit calmer. Uh, I'm gonna throw two more baits, and these are gonna be kind of when it's a little bit calmer. It's There's not a lot of wind, not a lot of waves going on right now. So I'm gonna throw something a little bit more finesse, and that's gonna be either a Carolina rig or it's gonna be a drop shot. With this Carolina rig, I'm still able to cover a lot of water with it. I'm throwing a 5 8 ounce weight on here. Um, throwing 15 pound mono as my leader, and I've got a brush hog on here. A fluke will work just as well. I'll be throwing these in kind of black, green pumpkin with a dip tail or kind of red plum type color. Um, I'm still able to cover a lot of water with this, cover those kind of brush piles, come through it really well, um, and make sure I get bit. The other bait that I'm gonna throw offshore is gonna be a drop shot. Um, I'm gonna be throwing this on 10 pound line. Um, and this is gonna be more for isolated stuff. If I'm fishing a brush pile, an isolated brush pile, I'm gonna be throwing it in there. It's not something I really wanna cover a lot of water with because I'm gonna have to fish it so slow. I'm usually throwing it with a 3 8 ounce drop shot weight and a six inch robo worm. And that's gonna be the same thing. Red, purple, black, any kind of one of those dark or deeper colors is really gonna work well for me. Talking about fishing offshore a little bit, uh, we did find one of our schools in preparation for the fall today, they're, they're really just kind of swimming around, following bait like crazy, and that's very typical for this time of year. Conditions weren't really perfect whenever we hit it. So this is gonna be kind of when I'm hitting a spot multiple times a day, if I see potential there, if I see fish, I'm gonna hit it maybe first thing in the morning, midday, and then end of the day if I'm out here in a tournament day, um, just to see when that timing is really best for them because they could bite and then they could not. Um, it's really going to be kind of covering a lot of water this time of year and it's going to be both shallow and deep. I'm hitting a lot of spots, trying to run into them, seeing if they're biting. They could be there and they might not bite. That's perfectly fine. We can come back another time and catch them. So moving shallow, I'm going to definitely try to fish shallow once I see that thermocline come in and form. Uh, I really don't want to be anywhere close to it, knowing where it's mixing, knowing where it's at every day. So I just kind of prefer fishing shallow where I catch a lot more numbers there. Um, and it's gonna be kind of two things for me. It's mainly gonna be docks and rock. Uh, with the lake being a little bit low or 1.85 feet low, uh, it's gonna be kind of uh, specific as to what type of docks they're gonna be on. There's not tons of docks that are gonna have perfect water depth under them. I'm usually looking between three to four feet deep for most of my docks. And then there's gonna be some that I'm fishing a little bit deeper and that could be seven, eight foot under them. Um, I'm gonna be kind of changing what I'm throwing uh, underneath these docks. So if I'm fishing the shallower docks, which is probably pretty much gonna be a, in a creek, in a canal, anything like that, I'm gonna be seeing a lot of those small minnows in those creeks. So one thing that I really like throwing and covering a lot of water is actually with a swim jig. This is gonna be a quarter, three eighths ounce swim jig. I've got a craw type trailer on the back. It's gonna give it a lot of action. One thing I did to this swim jig is actually cut the skirt of it just to give it a little bit smaller uh, presentation. I'm throwing this on 20 pound line. I've got on a 7.3 heavy and I've got on a pretty quick gear ratioed reel. 
I want to keep this bait up really high in the water column. That's why I'm throwing big line, a light bait, and a, a bait that gives a lot of, a uh, trailer that gives a lot of action on the back of it to keep it up in the water column. I usually want to be able to see it. And I'm just going to kind of shake it and reel it at the same time and keep it up there. I'm going to be skipping it up and around docks. And it's going to be a really, really fun bite. Um, you kind of just have to cover a lot of water. It's specific docks and being deep enough, but they can be on really any dock if it's got water on it. I just have to cover a lot of water this time of year, like I was saying. But this is a really fun bite. If it ends up being a little bit too calm, I'm going to probably have to slow down. Same thing we were talking about offshore. I'm going to have to slow down and kind of adjust. That's I'm going to go to a small bait that's just like this small shaky head. This is a quarter or three-eighths ounce shaky head. I don't know if I said drop shot. This is a quarter or three-eighths ounce shaky head. And I've got a four inch power worm on there, I think it's called. You get these at Academy. Got it on 10 pound line to 10 pound braid main line. This is a castaway rods. This is the saltwater medium, seven foot medium spinning. Uh, this is a really good rod with a lot of backbone. I'm gonna be pitching it in the exact same spots, the outside corner posts on these docks where that deeper water is gonna be. They're wait, those bass are waiting for those small minnows to swim in front of that dock and they're looking out and they're gonna eat whatever you're throwing in front of them, whether it's this swim jig or whether it's this finesse worm. So one of the other things I'm fishing is gonna be rock out here. And this is something that's an all day long deal that I do. Um, when I first get out there in the morning, I'm seeing a lot of bait flicking on top of the surface and that's gonna be really helpful for me in determining what bait I'm throwing. Sometimes I see big gizzard shad popping out there. Sometimes I see regular thread fin shad and sometimes I see those really small minnows. And that's gonna be telling me kind of the the bait that I should be throwing. So if I see the big gizzard shad, this is when I get really, really excited. See them up shallow on the rocks. This is anywhere from riprap up on the bank all the way out to submerged rock in seven, seven, eight feet. I'll be throwing something like this. This is a big spook. This is a 130 size. This happens to be a six cents, but you can throw Strike King, Yozuri, anything like that. Uh, one thing that's really important for me for this bait is the size. Not a lot of people throw a big bait uh, or topwater this size. And I've caught some really, really big fish out here on Lake Conroe. One thing that's also really important is you can hear it, it's a big one knocker. Uh, you can see kind of maybe in the inside of it, there's one big BB in there. It's gonna be really loud and that's gonna actually help pull up and piss these fish off and make those big fish really come up. I've had some really good days out on the water. I like Conroe throwing that. Most of the time I'm going to be seeing kind of thread fin shad popping. So that's when I'm going to start throwing stuff like a regular popper. This is the 70 size. Just trying to call them up. Same thing. If I feel like they're not coming up, I may have to change. Go down to them. I'm going to start throwing kind of a smaller square bill. This is like a 1.0, 1.5 uh, size. This is a flat side right here, actually. Um, I'm throwing this on 12 pound on a castaway 7 foot medium. Or if I start seeing that really, really small shad, I'm going to have to downsize. I'm going to have to go to kind of a micro spinner bait to me. It's got very, very small blades on here. I've caught tons and tons of fish out here. Most of the time, I'm actually really, really trying to look for those gizzard shad spots. The bigger the shad seem to be, the bigger the bass are. That's how I've kind of seen it out here. So I get really excited when I see that gizzard shad. I'll be looking, driving around in the morning, looking for herons, looking for any type of rock that I'm seeing, whether it's submerged or whether it's on the bank, like rip wrap or break wall or anything like that. The other thing that's kind of going on is it's kind of uh, uh, location specific. We're up here in Caney right now. You can actually see in the background, we've got some eelgrass, we've got some cheese. This can be a really, really fun bite. What I've mainly seen up here is more of that kind of minnows. Um, we're having to throw kind of smaller baits. Uh, that's not to say you can't get bit on throwing something bigger, but I'm always trying to match the hatch, trying to be as natural as I can. There's some hydrilla up here, and that's really where I've seen it get better. The grass was growing when that lake was full. Now it started to drop, and it started to mat out, and it started to create a canopy. So we can start to throw frogs a little bit more. We can start to punch inside of a little bit more. When I see this cheese on the surface, it's more of that yellow stuff you can kind of see in that background. That's cheese. I really, really love throwing a big frog on top of that. I might have to throw some BBs in my frog to weight it down, but I'm throwing a regular frog, brown or black. Um, 
and I'm pretty much just trying to create lines in it. If I'm not making lines in that cheese, that fish doesn't know it's there and it won't bust through. I can also move out to the edge and start fishing in some of this eelgrass, the submerged hydrilla, and I'm still gonna be throwing kind of stuff like this, this micro spinnerbait, trying to emulate those uh, smaller, smaller bait fish. Or one thing that I really, really love doing is throwing a weightless fluke. This happens to be a caffeine shad. I've got it in baby bass color right here. But a really, really good color for me is also gonna be that pearl or a albino. Uh, I work this really, really fast, just like that swim jig I was talking about. I want to keep it up. So I work this as quick as I can. I want it darting on top of the water. This is a really, really fun bite. I throw it on straight braid. Uh, it's a really, really great way to have a lot of sweet bites, uh, top water bites up in this grass up in Caney. Um, like I said, it's been a little tough to catch some giant fish, a bunch like kind of numbers for big fish. We're catching more quantity uh, than quality, but it should still be a great weekend on the water. I know there's a high school tournament coming up. Um, I expect it to get better and better as we start getting these a little bit cooler nights, a little bit cooler days. It feels really nice outside. It's in the 90s right now. Uh, water's going to start mixing up. We're going to probably start catching them shallow and deep. Um, this time of year, it's really just about hitting as many spots as I can today and run into them at one spot, and that could be shallow or deep. I just kind of bounce back and forth until I really figure out what's going on for that day. Uh, so this is the Lake Conroe Fishing Report. If you guys want to get out on the water with me, Hugh Coscuela, spend a day tuning in your electronics or coming out seeing how I fish, break down the lake, or you just want to have a fun day on the water, give me a call at 713-835-2887. Thanks and good luck fishing.